Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there, wherever you are, in your house, or wherever you are at this moment. Just go ahead and take a moment and identify that truly God has been good in your life. Somebody can agree with me right now and say, Preacher, the Lord is blessing me right now. The Lord has blessed me in the past, and I I sure enough thank him for that. I know God got some things in store for me in the future that I have not seen as of yet. And I thank God for that. But how many of y'all can shout right now and say, I thank God that he is blessing me right now. Right now, I got air to breathe. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I got the activity of my limbs. Right now, I got my right mind. Right now, I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. And if God has blessed you like that, you ought to go ahead and identify it by giving the Lord a praise. He's good. He's worthy. He's not just worthy at this moment while we're gathered together. He's worthy every living moment of your life. For truly, apart from God, you can do nothing. It is in him that we live, that we move, and that we have our very existence. I bless him on tonight, and I greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bring you greetings from the Sweetwater Church of Christ here in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm so thankful on tonight for this opportunity that has been extended unto me by the leadership you find ministers at the Sugar Land Church of Christ and I'm so thankful to be a part of this event and I'm prayerful I'm excited I'm excited I don't know about you but I'm excited about what God is doing in your life I don't even know you but I'm excited because I know that eyes have not seen yeah I know that ears have not heard I know that neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him do you love him on the night well you got something to be excited about because the Lord got a blessing with your name on it agree with me right there the Lord got a blessing with my name on it. I'm thankful on tonight. I'm thankful on tonight. And I know that we I have a, an assigned text that has been given um, on to me on tonight. So I would ask at this moment, if you have a copy of the Word of God, follow along with me. If you don't, it's going to be put up on the screen for you. If you will, go with me to the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah chapter number four. Nehemiah chapter number four. And we're going to read verses 1 through 9 for our consideration on the night. We'll really be delving into the entirety of the chapter. But we're going to read verses 1 through 9 for time constraints. Verses 1 through 9. The grass with us and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Nehemiah chapter number 4 verses 1 through 9. And the Bible says it like this. But it came to pass... That when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he will even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah, the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they then were very wroth. And conspired all of them together to come in the fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God. And he set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. And there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. May the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Pray with me, if you will. Spirit of the living God, we thank you at this very moment. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come and feast at the table of your word. Spirit, Father, we can't do anything until you come. So, Father, I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. And, Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray that all those that love God say amen. Amen. Hey Amen. I want you to do me a favor on the night. I want you to help me preach, if you will. If you, if you help me preach, I won't be long. I promise you. If, you. if you help me preach, I won't be long. Do this for me. On the night, I want you to look somebody in your house right there with you. Look, say it to yourself if you got to. Say it with me on tonight. I got to get back on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody ain't been on the wall in a long time. Tell them. I got to get back on the wall. Now, the context and, and the background for this book that we are in, this book, this book of Nehemiah, the, the people here, the people are, are in the process of, of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And it, it would have been a difficult and it would have been a tasking thing, a backbaking work for those that were involved. But it was necessary if they were to be saved from the attacks of their enemies. And if they were going to worship God as had been commanded in the law of God, as they labored to build the walls, they faced constant opposition to the work that they were doing. And, and they became weary and they got, they got a little tired and they, and they became discouraged, but they never stopped their work. And, and eventually they completed the task and they were victorious over their enemies. Now, in a sense, even on this evening, you you and I are building on a wall as well. You and I are doing a work as well. And we are building walls between the world and the things of God. And we are building walls that separate our lives from the ungodliness that surrounds us on every hand. And we build walls that are designed to protect the people and the things we love from outside attack and destruction. Now, since this is the case, since this is true. Would you also agree that there are moments, that there are times when we tend to become discouraged? Now, I know this is not talking about you. I know you always on the up and up. I know that nothing ever hurts your feelings. I know that nothing ever gets you down. But I believe I got about five or six people that are on the live with me right now that will agree and say, Preacher, yes, there are times when I get discouraged. There are times when I feel down. There are times when I don't feel like completing the work that God has put in my hands. There are times when we grow weary in the battle. We to grow too weary to be and be all that God has called us to be and all that God wants us to be. And I believe that there are some truths contained in this passage of scripture that we have just read on tonight that can help us in the process of rebuilding the wall, of staying on the wall, of getting back on the wall, of staying on the wall and doing the work of our God. Now, first here on the night, I would have you to know, children of God, that you don't have to look for trouble, trouble is going to find you. Yeah, yeah, tell somebody, you ain't got to look for trouble. You ain't got to look for a snare. You ain't got to look for no type of tribulation. You ain't got to look for no kind of trouble because it's going to find you. And that is a truth that we know all too well. Y'all know it seems that trouble stalks us as we travel through this life. Yeah, you got trouble on your job. Then you got trouble in your house. You got trouble in your relationships. You got trouble in your finances. It seems like trouble got a GPS on you. And you know everywhere that you're going. And of course, nowhere is more true. Nowhere do we experience more tribulation, more, more, more force than in our work for God in our work for the Lord and if we are truly serving the Lord with all of our being with all of our might I want to let you know trouble is going to come knocking on your door there now trouble has different directions it's coming from we think trouble always come from the north trouble don't always come from the north some of us looking in the south north we, we, we don't know where trouble is coming from you can just know that trouble is coming I would have you to know that we are going to experience even trouble from within 
Yeah, yeah, we'll experience trouble from within. Verse number 10 says, And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able, we are not able, we are not able to build the wall. I want to let you know, church, that you got to be mindful of the people that are helping you in your building process. You got to be mindful of the people that are around you while you are trying to do the work of the Lord. You don't need nobody always telling you what you cannot do, what you don't have enough to do, how you cannot attain it. I need somebody around me that even if they cannot see the promise, they trust in God enough to believe he's going to bring the promise to pass. Somebody give God a praise right there because you believe that your promise is coming to pass. I know you've been waiting a long time. I know it seemed like it wasn't going to never happen. Everybody else been getting blessed. Everybody else been getting delivered. Seem like you on the back burner like God done forgot about you. But I want to let you know tonight hold on. It's on the way. Now, now, no, no. no. It comes from within. We got to remember those those people from, from, from the tribe of Judah. They were the first to complain about the work and, and the reason here, the reason that they complain is apparent. When you read Nehemiah chapter 6 verses 17 and 18, they were in bed with the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they were entangled. Yeah, they were they were caught up with the enemy in the form of discouragement it comes as well. And these people, these people here, these people were those who dwelt beside the enemy. Those who lived near and like the wicked are always among those that try to discourage Discourage the work and not just the work, but the workers of God. I wish I had some help in here tonight. It is rare, church. It rarely shocks us when trouble comes from without, but when it comes from within, it often leaves us devastated. And whether it takes the form of deception with someone living a hidden life or a hidden life of sin or, 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 or the form of discouragement, when someone questions the very motives and the goals of the body of Christ, it hurts deeply and can cause us to deviate from our cause. Now, I want to let you know that we should not be surprised. Jesus had people on his team that were ready to discourage him at any moment's notice. And if Jesus' close confidant was that way, I want to let you know tonight, whether you know it or not, there may be people in your own life that are trying to discourage the work that God has called you to do. But I I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how nobody tries to create doubt and uncertainty in your life. You stay on the wall. Not only do we experience it from within, we also experience it from without in the form of, in the form of mockery. Any of y'all, any of y'all ever been mocked? Yeah, yeah. Any of y'all, any of y'all ever been mocked? Go to, go to verses one through three of our text. Verses one through three of our text. It says, but it came to pass that when Samballot heard that we builded the wall, that he was wroth, and he took great indignation and mocked the Jews, and he and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, "What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which they are burned?" Now Tobiah and the Ammonite was by him, and he said, "Even that which they build." If a fox go up, he will break down their stone wall. I know, I know y'all know a few people like that. No, child. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, you'll never be able to get there. You'll never be able to do that. But as long as God is on your side, somebody say it with me, I can do not some things. I can do anything, all things, everything through Jesus Christ that gives me the strength. Now, those who do not know the Lord, I would have you to know the those that don't have a right relationship with God are often the first to attack the kind of lifestyle that we as children of God are trying to live. And, and they attack the service, the very service that we render to the Lord. And this is understandable because they do not comprehend. They just don't know what we are doing. And a righteous life, listen to me where well, a righteous person stands in the way of rebuke. You are going to experience rebuke in the, to a godless life. We should not be surprised when attacks come from without. 
you are a child of God. If they attack Jesus, if they came after him, just look out. They're coming after you. And I would have you to know, church, that not only, not only, not only do we have to look out for trouble, not only will we experience trouble, but I want you to know that as you are on the wall, as you are doing the work of God, you got to stay on the offensive. Yeah, you got to stay on the offensive. When trouble came, Nehemiah went on the offensive. He took matters into his own hands and he devised a strategy for the battle that he was about to enter into. And he encouraged five attitudes that need to be implemented in the body of Christ today. And number one, you need to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say you need to pray. You need to pray. Yeah, you need to pray. Verse five, 4 and 5, he says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Now all of life, especially the battles, especially the attacks that we face in the realm of faith should be battled in the prayers of God's people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and I heal the land. Not only should you pray, but you gotta be prepared. Tell somebody you gotta be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be prepared. These people, these people were to be as prepared for war as they were for work. Yeah. Yeah. Tell somebody this means war. These people had to be as prepared for war as they were for work. They had to be ready for either at a moment's notice. Why? We live these lives that we live. I want to let you know that you got to be ready to work for Jesus and the war for him at the same time. Yeah. When you can came into the body of Christ, it wasn't time to lay down your sword down by the riverside. You got to be ready to work for Jesus and the war for him at the same time. This requires us dressing up in the what? whole arm of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the emphasis is on whole. God wants us all believers he wants us all to bear the armor all the time so that we are ready to stand for him when trouble finds us. Too many aren't willing to wear all the armor all the time. And then, and then church, and then believers, you got to be watchful. Prayer should always be coupled with watchfulness. Yeah, you got to watch and pray. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not advocating looking for a demon behind every bush. I'm not advocating an alertness to the tactics and the actics of the enemy. He is a deceptive and a slippery flow. You cannot take the devil for a joke. The devil ain't playing with you. He's out here trying to seek. He's trying to devour those that are trying to do the work of God. And even though it gets discouraging at times, we got to stay on the work. We got to continue to build on the wall. Not only do we have to be alert, but we got to, we got to have some determination about ourselves. Yeah, tell somebody, tell somebody I'm determined. Yeah, yeah, you got to have some determination. You got to have some determination about yourself. Verse, verse number 23 of our text says, so neither I nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor, nor the men of the God which followed me. None of us put off our clothes, saying that everyone put them, put them off for washing. Go to verse 6 says, so we built the wall and all the wall joined together unto the half thereof. For the people, for the people had a mind to work. Now, this was a people. This was a people that had a goal. This was a people that was determined to do a work for God. They could not be sidetracked by, by the antics of the devil. They could not be sidetracked by attacks from without, from attacks from within. They were a people with a man to work. They were a people that were ready to do the work of the Lord. And when trouble arises in the wall building process, because it's going to arise, there must be 
a determination that is greater than your opposition. I don't hear nobody. I said there must be a determination that is greater than your opposition. A heart that is steadfastly minded on the Lord's will regardless of the situation. Let hell come up all it want to. Let the rain fall. Let the breakers dance. Let the tides stand up high. If you are determined to do the will of God, you are going to go with him all of the way. It's not going to be easy. You are going to experience discouragement, but you got to be determined to reach your goal. Peter became discouraged when he saw the storm. Yeah, if we can determine to keep our eyes off of the storm and just put your eyes on the Savior, it will go a long way toward securing the victory that God has already promised us. And I think that we need to be more determined to succeed for the glory of God than we want. And we, we need to all be more, be more zealous for God in that area. We need to all be more determined to succeed for his glory than we are for our own glory. You got to be determined to lift up the name of God. Why are we going to war? Why are we warned? Why is it important that we build? Why is it important that even after over a year and almost a half of us being scattered abroad, of us being separated from one another, of us being from ourselves, from some of us, the devil been whooping on us extra hard. A lot of us, our faith has grown weary. A lot of us, we got doubt. We got some unbelief dwelling on the inside of us. Why is it that as I'm trying to come back to a place of stability and God, why is it important that I stay on the wall? Because it's worth the fight. Yeah. Yeah, tell somebody. Tell somebody, say it's worth the fight. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and roll up your sleeves. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and get your tennis shoes. Go ahead and get your Vaseline out. This, this right here is worth fighting for. I want to let you know there are some things that are worth fighting for. Some of y'all got to start going to war in your life. You got to start getting down on your knees and getting in the face of God. Giving God your cares. Giving God your worries. Giving God your anxieties. Some of y'all are worrying right now about your children. Why you worry? about your children. You may not like the things that they are doing and the things that they are saying, but you cannot make a grown individual do anything. You got to get down on your knees, go before the presence of God, give those worries over to him. Stressed out about a job, give that worry to God. Whatever it is, you need to go to war about it. Get down on your knees, get in God's face, let him handle it, because he is in full control. Your faith is worth the fight. Their, their enemies, their enemies did not want them to sacrifice to the Lord. They did not want them to engage in his worship. Friends, beloved, there, there are many around us, even today in the lives that we live today, that, 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 that this, who, who don't like what we do. Why are you always going down to that church? Why are you always praying? Why are you always got to do this? Why are you always got to do that? They're opposed to your shouting. They're opposed to the preacher. They're opposed to be honest. They're, 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 they're opposed to our worship. They're opposed to you living a life for God. But you got to continue. Continue to live the life that God has called for you to live. For this faith that we have, I want you to know it's worth fighting for. God is still looking for those, according to John chapter 4 and verse number 24, that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. He wants us to be ready for fight for our right to worship him in this way. We have already allowed the enemy to come in and silence our pray. Half of our worship services sound like we at a funeral look like you're ready for somebody to roll the casket in we've already allowed him to quiet up our mouth we've already allowed him to seal up our prayer don't nobody come down asking for prayer it's been extinguished there is no desire for God nobody's seeking God nobody has a zeal for God but I want to let you know that this faith that we have is worth fighting for when times get tough when the battle gets weary you are going to need a faith that can stand in Jesus Christ not only not only is your faith 
your faith worth fighting for. Your house, your house is worth fighting for. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, verse number 14 of our text said, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, the fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. He said, he said, fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, fight for your wives, fight for your houses. It's worth fighting. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, he reminded them that they were fighting for their families as well. If they did not take a stand, then they and their families would perish at the hand of the enemy. Beloved, your families are in trouble on this afternoon. We need to fight the good fight of faith for our family. Cover your children in prayer. Cover your house in prayer. Soak them down in the word of God and battle the enemy tooth and nail to protect them if necessary. I would remind you that your family Family is larger than just those that share your name of your bloodline. If you are saved, if you are a blood washed believer, then all other saved people are your family as well. Some of us are under attack even on this evening, and it is our duty to reach out to them in love of Jesus Christ and help them with their battle. Everything that you go through is not just about you, everything that you deal with is not just for you. There's a lesson in it, there's a blessing blessing in your story there's a blessing in your mess that's gonna help another brother out that's gonna help another sister out their mess because where you being somebody else is going that same way so it's worth fighting for not only is your family worth fighting for your future child of God is worth the fight yeah yeah your future your future your future is worth the fight Nehemiah you knew Nehemiah knew that if they caved in to the enemy, if they gave in to the tactics of the enemy, if they allowed the enemy to overcome them, if they allowed the enemy to win, then the battle was going to be over forever. There will never be life in Jerusalem ever again. They would have missed out on all of that. There would be no temple or worship of God in that city. Nehemiah knew that the time to stand was right now. We have turned our heads church far too long while the enemy has ravished in the body of Christ for much too long the saints have allowed the enemy to tantalize our children to traumatize our homes to terrorize our hearts and to tranquilize our worship if we ever expect to salvage anything for the glory of God then we got to take a stand today not tomorrow you got to take a stand today tomorrow might be too late you got to determine that you are going to take a stand for God and that we will not allow the trouble, that you will not allow the trial, that you will not allow the tribulation, the attacks of the enemy and the fears that we all feel from time to time to destroy the faith that you have in Jesus. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Don't you dare come down. I know what they're saying. You stay on the wall. You keep on building. You got a work to do. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing. You do the work that God has called for you to do. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. I call you tonight, sister. Yeah. Yeah. I call you tonight, brother. I call you. To take your stand for Jesus. Stop letting the devil win. Stop letting him have a heyday in your life. You got power over that. Take your stand for Jesus and for the future that he wants you to have. I promise you that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither has it even entered into your heart the things that God has prepared for you. But you ain't going to get it if you ain't ready to fight for it. God wants us to get back on the wall, church. He wants us to get back off the wall. He wants us to get back on the wall. Get off Netflix and get on the wall. How about that? Get off, get off Facebook and get on the wall. How about that? Get off of everything else that we are doing and get back on the wall. I wonder, church. I wonder 
what the Lord could do with us if we all determine that we will be all that God has called us to be. What, what could God do with his church if we took a stand for the things of God and refused to back down? That's, we, we got a culture today. We want to appease everybody. We want, want everybody to agree with what we're saying. Well, when when we, as the men of God, as the women of God, when will we, as the church, take a stand for the things of God and refuse to back down? Thus, say of the Lord, if God said it, that's God's word. What could he do if we determine to revive ourselves. What could he do. If we were all. To let the Lord have his way in our life. God can do it on today. God can do it on tonight. Even right there where you are. I know. I know even in your own life. It may seem like man. Everything that I've tried to build. Everything that I've sought out to do. It seems like it's all failed. It seems like it's all crumbled. You got to get back on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. My faith has become discouraged. You got to get back on the wall. Well preacher. My peace has left me a long time ago. I ain't had no joy in a long time. I find myself getting discouraged. I find myself feeling defeated. You get back on the wall. Don't stay where you are. Get back up because you got a work to do. God's waiting on you tonight, believer. He's waiting on you tonight, my brother. He's waiting on you tonight, my sister, to get back to work on the wall. And let me tell you, I know you may feel like you are not adequate to do the work that God has called for you to do. I know you may feel like you are not all of who you need to be to get the job done. But let me tell you, if God called you to it, God will give you everything that you need to make sure that you are successful and to get the job done. So I'm excited on the night because I know that if you would believe enough in yourself to get up out of your condition, get back on the wall, do the work that God has called for you to do, you're going to be successful. The devil is going to be right there along the way. He's not going to leave you alone, but having done all to stand, you got to stand there for if God be for you. He's more than the whole world against you. Somebody on the night, somebody on the night even, even has not yet started to get on the wall. You need to come to Jesus. Come to him. Come here in his word. Here, 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 hear the gospel. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After you've heard it, believe the same. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. Confess Christ as your savior. Be buried with him in baptism. Have your sins washed away, eradicated away with never to rise before you in this life and neither the life that is to come and the Lord himself will add you to his body praising God having favor with all the people and the Lord as to the church daily such as should be saved maybe maybe you're watching on the night you're standing in the need of prayer let us know message us comment let us know how we can pray for you for the prayers of the righteous they certainly avail us but let us know how we can pray for you if you stand in the need of salvation on the night reach out let us know we can get in touch with somebody that can make sure your soul gets saved on the night pray with me if you will spirit of the living God we thank you on tonight father we thank you because your word has already been settled in heaven father we thank you for this opportunity that you blessed us with to come and to feast on your word father I pray that somebody was blessed on the night father I pray that somebody has been drawn closer into a saving relationship with you father I pray that somebody's heart that is weighed down at this time Father, that you lifted up that burden. Father, meet the needs of those that are watching right now. And for those that will watch in the future, Father, I pray that you will meet their needs as well. We we'll thank you in advance, Master, for answered prayers. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. I thank you again, Sugar Land, for this opportunity. I pray that you have been encouraged. I pray that you have been blessed. And until the next time, may the Lord bless you and may he bless you real good.